Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back with your daily crypto content. And today we're going to be talking about XRP and XLM. Obviously, people think that Stellar Lumens is basically going to kill XRP, but that's just not the case. But hey, if you are an XRP or an XLM fan, you guys could buy an official crypto poster themed around both assets. We have XRP and also Stellar Lumens on the website right now. You guys are more than welcome to go check it out right now. Links will be down in the description below as well as in the comments below. But with that being said, let's talk about these two assets. So first off, I'm going to open XRP in a new tab, and we are also going to open Stellar in a new tab. Uh, Stellar Lumens at 20 and also XRP at number 6. So the interesting thing about these two is the overall backstory behind both of them because the funny thing about these two assets is that xrp and xlm are essentially the same thing um one has significantly less circulating supply obviously sitting at about half the total supply and max supply and also about half the circulating supply it's kind of funny how that works right but the thing is is that xrp is the original pretty much xlm if you will um, XLM is just kind of a fork of XRP and we all know how forks work. We already know how, um, you know, forks are basically undermined and they're overlooked a little bit. Uh, it's kind of the same thing with Bitcoin and also Bitcoin Cash. Like I honestly think that Bitcoin Cash will do better than Bitcoin at some point in time just because Bitcoin Cash is more sustainable and more uh, efficient. But the thing is, the difference between XRP and XLM is that XRP has the ODL service that Stellar does not have. And yes, Stellar is being adopted. If you guys missed it, uh, this basically came out yesterday. Uh, Stellar Blockchain Remnants a Corridor to Power Thailand Europe Payments. Now, this is to serve around 600 million customers. Now, the difference between these two, all right, and I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about the major difference. First off, this is a $17 billion Remnants Corridor. Uh, so it's worth 17 billion it's connecting thailand and 27 european countries and there's 600 million customers now a lot of people were concerned with this right a lot of people were saying what well, this does not look good for xrp um what what's going to happen is xrp going to basically you know be outperformed by xlm at some point in time and listen i'm just going to tell you my personal target points for seller at the end of this bull run because a lot of people were also wondering that we almost topped out a dollar in 2017 2018 i do think that this bull run will most likely see about five uh dollars we could see at the low end about three dollars so three to five dollars is conservative in my opinion for stellar lumens now the difference between these two and i've said it multiple times is that stellar is more so for people like you and me the retail investors the normie investors just like you know regular individuals making payments online and stuff like that so p2p payments like peer-to-peer -peer payments um, now ripple ripple is doing things a little bit different right so obviously when we look at the overall stellar you know website we could read about their remnants we could read about their cross-border payments and we could also read about the roadmap which if you guys haven't read the roadmap i suggest that you do um, there's nothing too crazy in here they're more so looking at scalable network effects scalable payments all that kind of stuff sort of what uh, xrp is doing now the difference between these two is you know just one has the odl service and the other one doesn't really have it now if we look here this is stellar for cross-border payments they're talking about b2b payments but i just don't think that they're going to grasp that market just because overall ripple has the partnerships that it needs to actually get those markets that's why sbi is really helping them ramp up over in asia as well now obviously they're talking about a two trillion dollar in cross-border payments each year sort of payment market uh they are also talking about you know swift and how it's you know pretty much slow it's using Nostra Vostra accounts and so forth now this is the traditional way this is pretty much how it would work um, so it is what it is now we do see here using Stellar for cross-border payment solves the time and money issues that come with traditional B2B payment methods the problem here though is just the fact that you know when we're looking at the cycle for Stellar or the Stellar solution if you will this is the Stellar network this is basically how it would work and now I just don't see how this is going to be fast efficient modern because it still looks like it's going to be a little bit slow in my opinion 
Now, I, I, I don't know, right? Because we obviously, you know, I don't know the full backstory behind this overall method. I don't know, you know, how it's going to work or anything like that. But it's it, it looks pretty similar to the ODL service in a way because we do see that the service provider, Anchor 1, Anchor 2, and then the receiving bank. And if you guys read this, issues invoice pay, uh, payable to Anchor 1, customer pays the, uh, this Anchor in their local currency, Anchor 1 moves value to Anchor 2 over Stellar Network, service provider's bank receives payments. So it still looks fairly good, right? It still looks, you know, fairly fast. But the problem is, is that I still think that this is going to be fairly slow because it has to go you know this is payable so this is pretty much like um it's almost like an invoice if you will uh then the customer pays this anchor and then it has to move the value to anchor two over the stellar network so you're still looking at the idea of paying it it's moving over the network and then it's getting received it's kind of the same thing as the odl service but the odl service is a little bit different right because bank one moves the transaction over to RippleNet. And then XRP instantly converts it in three to five seconds and it goes right to bank two. So it's a three step process instead of a four step process that we're seeing here technically. So in my opinion, I still think that the ODL service is faster than Stellar's. And I do think that's going to be more efficient in my opinion because it's simpler. Now, again, don't take my word for it. I'm just saying that's my overall opinion. Again, I could be wrong. Just saying. Now, we also see Stellar for Reminences because they're talking about a $500 billion of value is transferred cross-border through personal uh, reminences. Now, this is, again, for personal use, you know, peer-to-peer -peer payments technically. Um, now, if we do come down here, this is, you know, talking about the challenges, sender, uh, recipient, uh, financial institution, intermediary bank, beneficiary institution. Now, this is kind of the same thing that kind of goes with, um, you know, SWIFT, right? Because say for so bank one, uh, an individual wants to move money from bank one to bank two. Um, it has to go through Swift's Nostro Vostro accounts, so it takes a little while to unlock that capital. That's where that three to five, you know, business day sort of thing comes up, and uh, it does take time to convert it over to the other country's uh, currency. This is kind of what they're talking about here as well. It takes a very long time, and this is pretty much how it works. Two step or two efficient payment standards. Um, again, this is talking about the anchors and all that kind of stuff, but it, it still looks very slow in my opinion because it's still doing a four-way path. Um, so I don't know. I mean, it, it's hard to say, but this is pretty much what the user sees. Laura funds her account, and then we also see Laura sends money to uh, Victor, and then Victor withdraws his wallet. Now, the problem here is that are we still dealing with the idea because this is transfer, transferring funds via ACH, which is basically a bank deposit. So is the bank deposit still going to be in that sort of, um, you know, pretty much pre-authorized stage for three to five uh, days or, or what's happening here? Because there's not a lot of stuff that they're breaking down overall. Like this is the settlement network or yeah, this is pretty much the idea of settle, settling those payments in that small amount of time. But I still don't think that it's going to work as efficient as people think it is. Like they're st still saying three to five seconds for the speed, which again is kind of the same thing as XRP. Uh, but they don't have, I, I don't know if they have as many currency supports or anything like that. Um, I'm still a fan of XLM. I actually hold XLM uh, just because I do think it's more so for P2P payments, not so uh, for B2B, but they are trying to get B2B payments as well. But the problem here that I see is just the idea that their overall system seems a little bit more inefficient than XRP's, but they also have the benefit of the doubt that they're not being sued by the SEC. Um, but again, 90% of Ripple's clients are out of the U United States anyway. So um, this kind of looks like it could work very efficiently but it also looks like there's still a few things to kind of learn about um i don't know I, I they would possibly have to test this on a wide scale test uh, i don't doubt that it works efficiently uh, i do think that they'll most likely settle those transactions in three to five seconds and stuff uh, there's no pre-funding or anything like that so i don't know um it looks pretty cool it looks good i mean from what i'm seeing this looks very modern very you know good but again this is more so for p2p payments this one um now the overall cross-border payments that's more so for what we're trying to get into which is b2b so they are doing good things um stellar is moving fast as well 
but I still see Ripple outperforming. And the only reason why I see that is because the ODL service is really ramping up, and we do know that these are not small um, you know, markets that they're basically getting into. Uh, for example, even the ODL service over in Japan, you know, that's worth 1.8 billion. Yeah, sure, it's not worth 17 billion like, you know, the Stellar one, um, because this is actually a pretty big deal. Like, don't undermine what Stellar is doing behind closed doors because they are moving quick as well. Um, but I just think that there's more ODL services to really kind of ramp up. And when we t talk about these, you know, all the money, I don't think that XRP is going to grasp all of the money but i do think that it's going to grasp a lot of that b2b market and more so business to business sort of ideas with banks to banks and stuff like that it's more so for the banking structure not so for you know the normie use or p2p payments uh same kind of goes for the cross-border payments right so when we look at this we could see a lot of companies that are already partnered with ripple and we actually see ripple over here um, but we also see a lot of companies that, like I said, are partnered with them. So we do see banks. We do see American Express, Bank of America. If we come over here, we could actually compare these, right? Bank of America. I don't know if, yeah, there's American Express. Um, we also see a few other names, right? We also see, you know, Azimo, um, Neom as well, uh, TransferGo. Um, there's, you know, a lot of names on here. So you can't really, you know, Currency Cloud here as well. There's a lot of names. This is a lot of cross-border payments. So when we talk about all of the money, I do think that we still have a long way to go, but I do think that you know this is not the only names that are working with um, Ripple. There's still a lot of people or a lot of banks and stuff that are listed here, but I can't see all of them. They don't list all of them. Um, but you know, Santander is also pretty big as well. We do see that. Um, there's a lot of them st uh, standard chartered as well. So when we talk about, you know, between Stellar and also XRP, like, I don't think Stellar has the overall partnerships that Ripple has. Um, it's very interesting to see as well. Um, I think that Ripple is going to be doing incredible things, and so is Stellar. But when we compare the two, we already know, like, this is pretty much the overall standard of Ripple net benefits. Um, we already know what Stellar has been doing in the past. It kind of moves with Ripple in a way. But the problem with it is just the idea that, you know, Stellar and Ripple, it, it, it's the idea that XLM is a fork of XRP. So technically speaking, you know, even when we look at, you know, Ripple's director of developer relationships with Ripple, NetODL, XRP, and XLM, we could actually come down here and they even say XLM was a fork of XRP, codebase, Jed McCaleb was involved in both. So XLM has virtually the same architecture as XRP. So... You know, when we talk about them being used, I think that they're usable for anything. They even say that here, both are usable for whatever you want to do with them. That is the beauty of decentralized permissionless networks. Um, but, you know, it's still, you know, at the end of the day, they're both sort of payment gateways. And I do think that they're both perform fairly well. So, you know, I hold both. It's not a bad idea to hold both, but I do think that they'll both grasp completely different markets. You know, XLM is more so for that enterprise solutions. They even say it here, but, you know, so is XLM. Um, but I just, I don't see XLM working with the banking systems. I think that's more so on Ripple's part. Uh, we, even, we even heard, you know, Brad Garlinghouse say the same thing. Uh, he said that this is for banks, financial systems. Um, I think XLM is more so for P2P payments. And yes, that is a huge market. Um, you know, it... They even said, you know, $17 billion. Like I said, don't overlook this, guys. Um, XLM is going to also do incredible things, but I still think at the end of the day, XRP will outperform it in price uh, overall. So um, I think at some point in time, XRP will be worth three digits plus. Um, XLM, um, it kind of trails behind XRP in a way, but that's the idea of forks until, you know, they become their own thing basically so they'll both do incredible things um i'm still happy with both uh, i'm not you know i don't think that stellar is a killer of xrp at any sort of way uh, i think that xrp is you know the the real deal i think xlm is going to still do good things it's just you know in my opinion i i just think that this is p2p and i think xrp is b2b even though xlm is trying to get into b2b payments I just don't think that they have the partnerships that Ripple has, and I also don't think that their system works as well.
or B2B payments like XRPs. But that's just my overall opinion. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Um, but with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications on. If you guys do want more free content, you guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord down in the description below. Hope that you all have a beautiful day or a beautiful night wherever you guys are in this beautiful world. This has been Nick. Peace out, guys.